Hi guys, welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. Now today, we're going to show you how to get the metal switch and all the associated switches that come with it. Now, this is a bit of a funny one. Thanks to my Discord, the link is below if you want to join. It's got tons of Fallout people in there. We found out that the barn set is actually a duplication. It's a glitch. You have to buy it twice and this gives you the metal switch. If you don't know what a metal switch is, this allows you to use the garage door and other functions by the use of a switch, terminal, or trip wire, or pressure pad. Now I'll quickly demonstrate how this works. Now I got the metal switch, well duplicate barn set should I say, from the Watuga shopping market. Now this is very easy to get to if you've opened this area. As soon as you click on it, the vendor's just on your right as you go in. He may not have it all the time, so you may have to respawn worlds. Now, Using the switch is very straightforward. Obviously, you're going to have to use a generator as well. You can generate all different things with the generator, like lights, launchers, switches, terminals, all sorts. Now, just a quick demonstration. If you're going to use a keypad switch, which comes with it, you're going to want to power from the generator to the keypad switch, then to the actual door itself. Now, when you come up to this, you'll see it opens up. But when you put the actual keypad down, it will give you a code straight away. If you put the wrong code in, which I will now, if this would be someone who doesn't know it and can't use the switch until they do, it comes up red. So it is a safety procedure to get into your base. Now, as you can see, the keypad is probably the safest way to do it. I'll demonstrate now if you go straight from the generator to the switch. This allows anyone to actually activate the switch. So if this is your front door, for example, anyone can still open it. You'll have to go from the generator to the switch, then from the switch to the door. Now, you have to make sure you carry this series because the switch needs to be in between the actual power for the door and the generator. That allows it to open and close. So don't try and go to the door, then down to the switch itself. And also, please bear in mind, anyone can open this if there's no keypad in place. Now, as I said, there's other functions you can use for this as well. There's the terminals and the push pads, which again I think would be better inside rather than outside. But if you're quite happy to let people come in, or if it's just your front door and you just want like a fail safe as you run in, it's just going to close behind you and you've got nothing really there, don't worry about it. Now, same again, you're going to go from the generator to the push pad itself, put that onto the push pad, then you're going to go from the push pad to the actual door. Now, you see it will open straight away because I'm standing on it, but if you stand back, the door will start closing again. As soon as I step on the pad, it will start opening. So it just activates through pressure. Now, you can actually do quite a few traps with this as well, but I don't actually have some of the needed traps to make this work, like the flamethrower, where you stand on it and the flamethrower will actually come out. But at some point, I will try and hook that up. With the terminal itself as well, you can also set up a trip wire. Now, to do this, you'll have to go from the generator to the actual terminal, then down to the actual trip wire itself. Now, to activate the trip wire, you'll then have to go to the terminal. Now, you can actually hook this up in a combination where it can actually activate the door for you. But I won't go into that just now. I'm just trying to show the basics of what it can actually be done. This can also be set up as a trap. Just go into the computer, arm it all, and you'll hear it click as soon as I walk through it. Now, this would arm, say, a door, a trap, or lights. You can hook it up in a sequence which I'll go into more depth on how to set up a more rigorous task throughout the functions. Now there's also a sound meter. Now you might wonder what this is for. You can hook it straight up to the generator, it will constantly play a sound. However, if you go from the generator to the console itself or terminal, you can go from the terminal then to the actual noise meter. You'll hear now it's playing all the time you can go to the terminal and change the frequency. Now, this can also work as an alarm for someone coming into your base. Again, it can be hooked up to the trip wire, but I'm going to demonstrate it actually hooked up to the push pad itself. So when someone walks in, it activates a noise, so it's like an alarm beacon for you yourself. So to do that, we'd have to go from the generator to the terminal, and from the terminal to the push pad, and from the push pad to the actual noise meter. So if you've got quite a large base or if you've got a trader outpost and you want to know when people are actually there, you can put this at the front door. When they walk in, it will activate the actual noise. So you'll hear now when I walk over the pad, it will 
set off the alarm. See? Done. Very simple. Now, it's very complex the more you put into the actual circuit itself. As I said, I'll try and do a more in-depth and try and explain a bit more in-depth as well. Some of the things you can actually set up. But for today, I just wanted to show simply what it was. Let you know that the barn set is duplicated. You can get it from Watugo Shopping Plaza. Go down and get it. Buy it twice. I'd done it straight away. I already had the barn set. Bought it again and activated all the switches for me. So guys, thanks for stopping by and I'll catch you in the next one.